everyone, Misco Electric here, and today I have the Electron V-Box 48 Amp Electric Vehicle Charging Station, also known as EVSE, Electric Vehicle Supply Equipment. I'm gonna call it EV Charging Station because that's what's here on the box today, but I'm gonna unbox this and I'm also going to take it out into the field and test it. So let's get to it. It looks like it's packaged really well, has a lot of extra foam above and around the charging station. This box includes a drilling reference paper. So this is a template that makes it really easy to mount the bracket because it has the screw holes here. Very simple and easy. This user manual looks like it's a great resource, not only for mounting the charger, but it also tells you specific information about the lighting and what that is associated with on the front of the charger, as well as if you decided to hardwire this device, it gives you those instructions in here as well. What I mean by hardwire is there are two options to connect this to power. One, hardwire, you can connect it directly to your circuit breaker panel, or there's a NEMA 1450 plug that is attached to the pigtail. I'm gonna use that and plug it into a receptacle. Before I do that, let's finish this unboxing. It looks like I have a smaller box here. This includes some anchors and screws, as well as this is the connector holster. So essentially it's what you would put the J1772 in when it's ready for its resting place. And some of them come built into the charger. This one is separate, so you'll mount it on the wall next to it. Next, it looks like I have another portion of the mount for the cable. So the connector holster here will be mounted on top of this, and then the cable will wrap around here for storage. This cable here that goes from the device up to the NEMA 1450 is a pigtail, and this is a very long pigtail, probably the longest that I've seen an EV charging station offer. And why this is good is because it allows flexibility in plugging into an outlet that might be at a lower height or having the station mounted at eye level without having to worry as much about where this plugs in. Next here, we have the cable. This is a 20 foot long cable, so nice and long as well. And this is gonna be great for flexibility to not only reach all the way over to your vehicle to plug it in, but if you do have a second EV and you wanna be able to charge that and not have to move any cars, you can stretch it over and likely reach that one as well. This connector is made out of a hard plastic and it has some ridges underneath for a little bit of a grip here, but I tend to like the type of connectors that have a more rubberized feel because they don't slip out of your hand as easily. Still, the plastic material does look like it's pretty high quality, and I like that it has this cap to keep it protected if you don't have it on the connector holster. The housing of this device is made out of a hard plastic, and it has this metallic finish on it, it looks nice enough. Uh, it doesn't feel too premium, but I think for this price point, it's all right. What I do like is that it has this information screen here, and that's gonna provide data while I'm charging. The unit itself feels pretty lightweight. It's about 12 pounds, so it's not gonna be too heavy when you're trying to hold it up and mount it onto the wall. It looks like on the back here, the mounting plate is already put on here with screws. So I'll have to unscrew that to be able to put it up on the wall to mount it. And then as far as I understand, there's a place back here, which I'll show you guys, where you can adjust the amperage. This here is the bracket that goes on the wall when you're ready to mount the device. And so you can see the screw holes here and then we'll just screw it right back into the side once we're ready. 
Right behind this tiny panel is access to a dial that will allow you to adjust the amperage. So there's a chart right underneath here that tells you zero is 16 amps, one, 24 amps, two, 32 amps, three, 40 amps, and then four, 48 amps. Now, this is the cable that you would remove if you wanted to hardwire it into your circuit breaker. And essentially what you would do is unscrew this and then take the conduit immediately into the device and then connect it to your panel. Now, if I was mounting this bracket in concrete or in drywall, I would probably want to use this in order to make sure that I would be drilling my holes in the right spot and then using the anchors that they provided to be able to secure it and make sure it doesn't move at all. But today I'm gonna mount it to this wood piece so I'm not gonna need to use this and I'll use those screws that they provided. And don't forget to take a level to it to make sure it's straight. Next, I'm gonna attach the holster and just make sure this is in the upright position where the clip is on top and they'll mount together. Okay, now that I have the mounting plate and the holster all connected to this wood piece, I'm gonna put the device on there and get it nice and tidy. All right, the Electron V-Box 48 amp EV charging station is mounted and ready to be plugged in. I'm gonna take it to a NEMA 1450 outlet, plug it in and see how it charges my EV. Now it's ready to be turned on. The button is on the side of the box right here. So all I have to do is depress it in and we should see it light up. Solid blue means that the device is disconnected. Rolling blue means that it is connected to the vehicle. Rolling green means that it is charging the vehicle. Solid green means that it is fully charged. And then finally, red is a fault. The Tesla port looks a little bit different and this one came with my vehicle to convert to a J1772 adapter, which every other electric vehicle on the market has. So I'm gonna plug it into this and then plug it into my car to test it out. All right, as you can see, there is some green pulsating lights here, which means that we're charging. There's a screen here that gives me quite a bit of data, so let's talk about what that entails. The big numbers right on the front are gonna be the amperage output. So 48.6, we're pulling the most that this can handle. Underneath that, you'll notice that's the duration of time we have been charging. Then on the other side here is the amount of kilowatt hours that have been put into the vehicle so far. Underneath, there's a black bar that has a little bit more information. It tells me what the rated amperage is in this one, right on the front says 48 amps. Then we'll see the voltage. This is 243 volts it's saying right now, but that is fluctuating depending on how much power is coming through. And then finally, all the way on the far side, we have the temperature outside. So 74.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Now keep in mind, this device does not have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or app integration. Simplicity is truly a virtue with this device. Most EVs, including my car, have an app that I can control the charging session. So whether I want to schedule a charging session for a certain time to initiate, or if I wanna change the amperage, I can do that all through not only my phone, but inside my car as well. And a lot of the data that you'll see here on the device is also duplicated in those two places too. Let's go take a look at the information being displayed in my car. All right, it looks like I am pulling the full 48 amps. All of the same information is displaying here in the car, 240 volts and 11 or 12 kilowatts is what I'm seeing for the rate for the charge. I'm already at 86%, so I'm at a higher state of charge, but all looks good from inside the car. So it looks like out of the box, the V-Box does as advertised and it's operational. A very simple and easy setup. Now let's talk about this cable. This is a very flexible cable, so I feel like even in cold weather conditions, it's not gonna be too big of a hassle to plug it in the car and fight with the cable. As a reference, let me show you what 20 feet looks like.
so I can nearly get all the way to the front quarter panel of my vehicle. The holster here is a very simple design and although it's not attached to the device, I like that because it gives me the flexibility of mounting it a little bit further away so I have easier access to plugging in potentially. The holster up on top that holds the connector is really easy to put the connector in and out of. It's a smooth transition. Overall, this device is very simple, but I think that is a nice thing about it. The setup is very, very short, and there isn't any potential for any kind of cybersecurity hacks or anything like that. Well, if you enjoyed this review of the Electron V-Box 48 amp EV charging station, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.